Today we're going to do an upgrade on a Razor Blade Pro. The bit you're going to need for this to take the back of the computer off is a T6 Torx. Uh, mini screwdriver will also come in handy. Two sizes of mini screwdriver. One is very small for the um, SSD and your WLAN card and then you'll need a larger screwdriver for the regular screws holding the motherboard on. First you'll need to flip the laptop over to the back side. There are ten screws um, around the edges. I think there are a couple false screws too. This is just from me uh, wiping with a, a knife trying to get the stupid security cover off. You might be able to see there's a warranty yeah, that little sticker there is what you have to peel off with like a nail, a knife, or whatever. Be careful not to scratch the back of your laptop. I'm pretty sure that's purely for warranty issues. Um, my computer actually had half of the screws backing off, and they were loose. So I'd really like to know what Razer expects us to do if those screws come loose and not void our warranty or have them try to void our warranty by uh, <laughs> screwing our screws back into our laptop. Now, there is some thread locker compound on the end of these. You might be able to see that. Just a little bit of blue. But otherwise, not much at all. And clearly not enough to keep them from backing off. So, that's just one observation. Be careful if you uh, still have a warranty intact you might not want to do this upgrade because Razer could give you a bunch of crap about uh, opening your laptop. So I'm going to take the cover off and then show you the inside. Okay, the two spots that gave me trouble peeling this apart, do not use a screwdriver to pry the two halves apart, was uh, here in the speaker holes. They get a little bit tight and uh, yeah, my son is kind of complaining too because it looked a little scary. But just use your fingernails and uh, fingertips. You shouldn't need more than that. Um, if you don't have fingernails, you cut them way back. Try to find a piece of uh, like a plastic bicycle pry or something that isn't going to damage this because this is aluminum and it will bend and uh, nick very easily. So be very careful when you're peeling this apart. But it's starting to come open. So I'm going to explore around in here. I know the hard drive goes back in this hole right here, and the memory is on the back side of this motherboard. So I need to get that motherboard up, and I'll show you the next step. Okay. Goofy music in the background because my son's playing with uh, a baby toy. There are a lot of connections on this thing to disconnect. Um, the first being this connector right here. There's a little black flap that flips up and that releases the connector. Then each of the sides has a white connector for the fans. There's another one over here, right there. Um, your hard drive is actually a solid state drive. It's this card under here. And there is a little screw in this corner. Uh, you will have to remove that by pulling this up a little bit um, and getting under there and getting the screw. Otherwise, that card comes out really easily. If it didn't have that screw, it would probably just fall out when you're just walking around with your laptop. So make sure to get that screw reinstalled when you get everything back together. Um, then you have obviously the battery connector right here. You have a some tape that holds these wires in place, but there's a connector here and here. This connector is, is a plastic connector that's a smaller version of this. You can use a Phillips head screwdriver to gradually pry back and forth to get those out. This larger metal connector is like these right here. Um, you have a, a pull tab on it. Be very careful. There's lots of other components around here that could potentially be damaged. Um, you can pry a little bit on the edge with a fingernail. Um, but whatever you do, just be very careful. It will eventually pop out. Then you have this connector. showed you those. This wire runs all the way down to your LAN card. 
the land card pulls out this way, but before you do that, it has a screw right here that you need to remove. And then these two wires stay attached to the body, and you can just swing it over out of the way. Um, the hard drive, once it's installed with the cable, you're going to have to buy because they obviously they don't provide you with one for some reason. Um, plugs in right here on the back side of the board, so it would be practically impossible to install without taking the entire board out. Let's see what else. Um, this connector right here, you can either connect disconnect it here, or there's a, a plug right here that you can disconnect this wire, um, peeling back tape as you go, and uh, trying to find everything. I think that's it. I think those are all of the connectors you need to be worried about. This entire board, um, as you saw in the other clip, or as you'll see in the future clip, can come out and you don't have to bother disconnecting all of this stuff. Just lift the laptop so when you do the flip, um, this clears the, the table or whatever it is you're working on. The heat, these heat sinks also stay attached and this part of the heat sink comes out, the fan stays. So that's pretty nice. But yeah, I think those are all of the connectors. And, and just take it easy, there's a lot of screws. I mean, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And then each of these cards under there too have a, have a smaller screw. So, yeah, take your time, be very, very precise, gentle, and uh, it will eventually come apart. <laughs> and avoid static electricity. Don't walk across shag carpets a few times before doing this. Um, very, very bad. Okay, just an FYI, but there's two screws on the outer perimeter. You can see the black in the middle. Those don't get screwed in. It's that one and that one that actually get the screw because those outer screws are actually the body screws. So save yourself some time and don't make the mistake I did. All right, after carefully peeling off all of the connectors, um, your RAM is on the back side right there. And the hard drive goes in this spot. I've got everything disconnected except for the battery, which I'm going to disconnect in a second because um, I didn't want to risk unplugging it from the other side because I didn't have a good way to grab onto it. All of the, uh, the meat of the connector is kind of on this side. And it's a little bit loose. I mean, it's not a super tight connection. So, um, this takes definitely a lot of finesse, and there are a lot of stickers that are on sensitive electronics, so make sure you're doing this in a dry, well, I guess mild humidity is not too bad, but make sure there's not static around, because um, you got a lot of components that could be affected by static. And you want to take a very gentle hand because a lot of these connectors can break really easily. So uh, you've also got thermal material that's going to stay behind on certain pieces, so make sure to keep track of that. You don't want that to fall off and then not have a thermal heat sink on your onboard chips because they will cook. There's one for, I think that might be the CPU right there. So uh, be very careful when you're doing this stuff. I'm going to look for, I think this might actually be the hard drive connector right here. So, I take my disk drive and put it like this, that side up. And we're going to check to see if that works. Looks like it goes this way. Alright, so when your hard drive is plugged in, get some light on this. The connector, the cable, will be pointing downward. And you can kind of see when you plug it in, one side is a little bit thicker than the other, but that's definitely where it plugs in. I did some research on the laptop form and, uh, or notebook form to make sure that I knew what I was getting myself into beforehand. So that's got the hard drive plugged in. I just need to when I flip the board back over, I will make sure that the cable is routed 
such that it's not interfering with things and not getting stuck behind. So I'll probably tuck it underneath this, like under under there, with the cord on the opposite side of the board. And uh, I'm going to do the ram real quick. With the ram, you've got these two notches that pull out, and then the ram tilts up. So um, let's see if I can get. press the two tabs out, like that, and the ram just comes up. So, you take your old ram out, and you plug your new ram in. So, I've got some Corsair Vengeance. Get the light on it and show you what part number it is. And that's the actual part number. CMSX 16 gigabyte uh, X3MA 1600 C10. Um, and I know that the guy on the notebook form had used this before too. It's really good memory. So that'll double my memory up to 16 gigs. Should be able to do video editing of this video using my new software because I'll actually have enough memory to support it now. <laughs> um, and all my future vlogs, part of the reason why I haven't been vlogging is because I had to use my old laptop to edit video with the new software because this computer didn't have enough memory to do video editing. So this is... Uh, this should get me rolling on this year's vlogging season. So uh, I'm going to do the next step, get this memory installed, flip the board back over, make sure all the heat sink material is in the right spots like that. And I'll show you the final results when I do finally get it all buttoned up. Okay, careful during reassembly because that grill work right there goes down into this notch. And you do have some cords, so make sure this cord is tucked out of the way otherwise you'll pinch and you could damage stuff same thing on this side there's a little cord right there so just an FYI that's one of the things that can get in the way alright here we go Razor Blade Pro 16 gigabyte memory install seems to be working great so I'm going to uh, get the hard drive recognized and see if that works Okay, once the drive is installed and you've restarted your computer, you want to go into Disk Management. If you're in Windows 8, you just right-click on the... Let's move my mouse over there. Right-click on here, and then go up to Disk Management. And that brings you to this screen. So what you want to do is select GPT. It is the newer um, boot record partition table that supports much larger drives. MBR only supports up to two terabyte drives. It's um, used by older operating systems. So just pick GPT and our new drive has appeared. So we'll open this up bigger. And you can see that you have disk zero unallocated. So you want to right click on that and say new simple volume you get a wizard next you want to I want to use the entire amount because it's just going to be a storage drive um, drive letter D is fine format with NTFS because NTFS is the uh, the newer format system XFAT is uh, left over from older older windows <clears throat> pretty much everything uses NTFS just fine now the only time you have to worry about XFAT is if you're trying to, um, say, run memory cards on older devices, like maybe the Xbox 360, and uh, you're trying to watch movies on your, your game console. But the newer consoles are, are totally different, so you use the, leave the allocation size at default, quick format, and that's fine. I'm just going to call it storage. And next, it just tells you what you just did, and you say finish. It'll format, and then should eventually appear. Yep, this is it. So you can look, and there it is, storage D. So we've got our secondary drive installed, and it's all good to go. So uh, one last thing, the cable that you want 
is this guy. Um, it's a uh, HP part 589-673-001. I'll also put this in the descriptions. It comes in a kit. Do not be tricked into buying just the bracket. The bracket is not what you need. You need the actual installation rail kit. And you can see that little cable right there is what you need. That will work. If you get a longer cable, like this one, from Amazon.com that claims to be the equivalent of the part, it will not work. I tried this one, didn't work. It's junk. Might work for another computer, won't work for this one. So I lucked out, I found my kit, and was able to install the hard drive. So I hope that helped, and uh, upgrading laptops is not nearly as bad as you might think. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. Uh, I'm actually going to be getting into reviewing a lot of hardware tools, uh, motorcycle parts, and things that I've accumulated over the years, as well as getting back into vlogging now that I actually have the hard drive storage and uh, memory to support it. <laughs> so hope this helped you guys out. Let me know if you have any questions or comments.